Hey besties, it's Lisa Marie with Crafting My Best Life with Lisa Marie. I'm so glad you're here. If you're new, welcome. And if you're returning, I love you so much. Thank you for coming back. It is great to see you. Today, I have 20 rustic DIYs for you. I know you're going to love them, and let's get started right now. If I mentioned that I got something at Amazon, and it's something that you need too, check out the link in my description box to my Amazon store, and you can find all those items there. For this project, I'm going to use a leftover ring from a Dollar Tree wreath form that I had. I had used the rest of it. And now I'm just using my little tin snips to cut off those pieces that connected the other rings. Once I take them off, I'm going to bend this and shape it into a heart. It took a little bit of doing, but it is possible, especially once you get the pointed bottom, then you can bend it in. And then I also had to reflatten it because I had just literally pushed it all out of whack there, but I did get it to lay flat. My husband was kind enough to go out into the yard and collect all different sizes and lengths of sticks and twigs. So I cut them so I could form them around this heart and basically make a stick heart. And I used my hot glue gun. I'm not going to show you the entire process because it did take quite a while, but I think you get the idea of what I'm doing. If I find a bent one, I use it for the curve and then I just use smaller pieces to shape the rest. And I went about three high, if you will. Not an exact measurement, but just till I thought it looked full enough and covered the wire form. Once I got the wreath done and it felt like it was thick enough, I took some of my burnt umber paint and I painted the black wire form. I just wanted it to kind of camouflage into the heart itself. The next thing I'm going to do is take this large 11 by 14 frame I got at Dollar Tree. And what I want to do is I want to attach this heart to the glass piece and I want to remove the backing so it'll be like transparent. I found these rub on stickers or decals from Dollar Tree and they're so cute. And so there's this little green wreath and then there's some other pieces. I'm going to put a little one on each of the corners. I am going to attach this heart to the glass. I use some hot glue. I did paint the frame this celery color chalk paint from Waverly. And when I was all done, I didn't like it. So I ended up taping it up and painting it black. You'll see that here coming up. Now, the way I made it look like it was hanging was I took a piece of buffalo check ribbon from the Dollar Tree and two pieces of rope, and I just glued those to the edges of that little ribbon, and that's just a faux hanger. It's really hot glued onto the glass where it touches. I've painted the frame black now. I feel much better about that. I added some twine in the middle of the frame, and I really think this finishes off the look, or at least I thought I did, and then I thought, nah, it needs a bow. Oh my gosh, so I added a little buffalo check bow that I got at Walmart, and I, it was already made. It was the perfect size and I just trimmed a little dovetail at the ends. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's a very unusual piece. Would you have added the bow? Let me know. I hope you'll follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Pinterest. You'll find all the links down in the description box. Come say hi. I'm so excited about this DIY. I'm using an old book and it's a diet book. What I'm going to do is show you how to fold this to make a book page vase. I'm gonna do it three times. So you're gonna fold the bottom corner up and then you're going to take that whole piece and fold it to the spine. And then that little triangle at the top, you're going to fold over and then tuck it underneath. And you're going to do that every other page. And then try to push it way down because it's going to really need to be pushed down as you go. The next one, you're going to take the top and fold that corner down to the spine. 
Then you're going to take that bottom right corner and just fold it up to the line of the other fold and then take the little triangle point and fold it to the end of the paper of the bottom fold. Literally, you're going to do this every other page for the entire book. My book was about 300 pages. So, you know, depending on how big you want this to be, that's how it would go. And I'm not going to show you every page I'm folding, obviously, but I'm going to show you various stages as I go. You can see it's starting to look like a vase. And I wanted to show you that if you didn't want to do a full vase, you could put like on a piece of cardboard or on a frame, you could just do like a half one. And that would be kind of a cool wall hanging. Anyway, I'm also going to link the person who I learned how to do this from. Um, it was from a YouTube video from a lady who mostly does crocheting, but I really loved her technique. So we'll make sure to put a link for that in my description box. And I'm showing you the spine there because you really want to fold that in and get it as tight as possible. I'm using this amazing netted ribbon from burlapfabric.com and I will have a link down in my description box for this. And I'm just rolling it, literally, just rolling it and then kind of looping it as I roll so it's not a tight roll. And then I'm going to cut it off at the end and just turn it into a flower. And it kind of has like a rose-like look. And literally, I made this up. You could just do it any way you want. I just had this idea that it would work. The ribbon does have wire in it, and that's why it's possible to kind of shape it. So once I get that completely shaped and kind of fluffed the way I want, I'm going to take a little piece of jute twine and I'm going to just tie it around the bottom to secure it so that it doesn't fall apart. Next, I'm going to take some burlap that I got at Walmart. I'm just going to cut off a little strip and I'm going to pull off all of the strings going the long way up to right close to that seam on the other end. And then I am literally, I'm making this one up too, by the way, <laughs> I'm just going to roll it and um, just kind of, you know, roll it back and forth, maybe a little, you know, twist it a little bit and literally just kind of make a wildflower looking thing. I'm just trying to make a bunch of really rustic kind of flowers out of the rope and the burlap and that kind of stuff just to make it you know really kind of cool and, and maybe a little bit vintage-ish looking vintage-ish is that a word I don't know I think I made it up oh well <laughs> so I'm just trimming the top giving it a little haircut and then I'm going to take some more of the jute twine and I'm going to wrap it around four fingers like you're going to make either a tassel or a pom-pom and I think I wrapped it around like 15 times And then I'm going to cut it off and I'm going to tie a another piece right across the middle. And I am actually going to do this twice. And then what I'm going to do is lay them across each other and make a flower that way. Now I'm gonna take this really pretty, very thin kind of you know, ombre tone yarn I got at Walmart, and I'm gonna wrap it around each petal back and forth across the middle and just kind of give it a little color because I thought that would be fun too. Once I've secured that, I'm gonna cut off the excess thread and I'm gonna fluff my flower, you know, all the little loops all the way around. I took some flower pieces that I had around and just pulled off really small pieces and hot glued them to the center of some of the flowers that I made using the twine and the burlap. I just thought that would be really fun. And now I'm making another flower and I actually got this idea from Leonep at DIY Beauty on Purpose. She did this in one of her videos and I'll link her down below as well, where she pulled out the long threads between the two edges so you don't take it all the way to the edge but you see how the edges have seams and then I'm going to take the bottom and hot glue it up to the other edge all the way across the piece and then I'm going to roll it and hot glue it and it makes such a pretty flower and I did want to give her credit for that. Now I'm going to fluff it 
And then I'm going to add a little piece of a yellow flower right into the center. And I just love the look that this gives with these flowers to add the color. And I'm just going to add a few more little flowers to the center of this one. And now I'm going to make another one, but this time I'm just going to wrap it around three fingers. I think I did 15 times again. And I'm going to tie the middle like I did before. I made two of these. And after I'm done, I'm going to actually cut the loops open this time to make a little bit of a different looking kind of a flower. I'm going to lay them across each other like I did with that other flower and then I'm just going to fluff it out after I hot glue it and there's that flower and I'll add something to the center also to give it a little bit of color. I've got this cute little pick of off-white flowers from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to add those to the center so it's going to be attached to the inner spine and then I've got this leftover pick of lavender that I took the lavender pieces off of and on the ends I'm going to add all of the different flowers that I made out of the burlap and the twine and that way it'll look like it's coming off of the stem with leaves and I just love the way that looks and I'm going to hot glue it into the spine so it stays put and then I'm going to add those other flowers that I showed you first and I'm going to hot glue those as well and that way they won't go anywhere now if you wanted to change this out seasonally I wouldn't hot glue then I would just stick them in there and maybe put some tape or something and now I added two different kinds of very sheer ribbon from the Dollar Tree I just thought that would be very pretty and, and light and then I'm going to take this really cute lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree and just wrap it around the center of my little bow and I just did a very basic you know shoestring bow and I'm going to cut the ends of my bow with dovetails and that is it I absolutely love how this turned out and I'm actually giving it to my mom for Mother's Day because she is quite the avid book reader. I hope you guys like it. If you like mega videos like this one, go down in my description box and there is a link with a playlist of all my mega videos. Hope you enjoy. I have books coming out of my ears that I need to donate. And so I decided to use some of the book pages for a Trash to Treasure DIY. And so that's what I'm going to do. I've also got this old Yankee candle and it cleaned it out and I took off the label. And so that's another piece of trash I'm going to use. So I'm going to rip up some pages from the book, use my premium decoupage solution. It's not Mod Podge, but it is like Mod Podge, just not that brand. And I'm going to start applying it to the outside of this glass candle holder. And then I'm going to lay down the pieces until I've covered the entire thing and you know it does take a little bit of time because I cut them up in or not cut them I rip them up into small pieces but I love the look and it's just gonna be so cute when it's all done totally worth it oh and I forgot to mention I'm using a foam brush for this because it absorbs that decoupage solution and it's just so easy to put it onto the glass and over the paper because I'm gonna be putting it under and over the paper to make sure it's completely stuck to this candle holder I have all my book pages attached now to the can holder and I'm going to use a chippy brush and I'm just going to dry brush some of the antique wax from Waverly over it. So basically dry brushing, get a little bit on your brush, wipe off most of it and then apply the rest. Just kind of drag it across your surface. And I'm also going to hit the edges and seams if there were any, you know, harder because that's where you would expect to see a little more of the antiquing. And actually when I say antiquing, I just mean wear and tear. 
I'm going to use a little bit of the faux leather ribbon from Dollar Tree. It's the darker brown color and I'm going to make a little handle for this. I'm only going to do one. I decided to make this asymmetrical and I'm just going to hot glue and smush it down so you don't get any bumps or ripples. That's the one thing about using hot glue with these. Sometimes you can see little bumps. I'm being really careful about it. And I'm just going to hot glue that on there, you know, even up a little bit higher to make sure it stays in place. Now it's not a functional handle, it's just for looks only. Now if you've watched my channel very much, you know I love these pop-up stickers. So I'm going to take two of them and leave them on the paper still, and I'm going to paint them black with some ink chalk paint. Then I'm going to take them off, put a dab of hot glue on the back and attach them to the very bottom of that faux leather ribbon to make it look like little tacks. I don't want the paint to chip or peel so I'm going to put a little bit of the decoupage solution over the little stickers and I think that's going to help keep them nice and black. I decided that it needed a little bit more of like a distressed look so I took some of the antique wax and I painted the inside bottom so it would kind of show through and not look like clear glass. And then of course once I started that I got a little carried away and I started you know brushing around the lid and along the base and anyway I do like the way it turned out. I just can never leave well enough alone. Does anyone else have that problem or just me? I decided to add some white flowers that I had from the Dollar Tree. They were so pretty. The only thing is they're so white and I wondered should I have put something not so bright in there but then I thought no that's okay and then I added a lily in the center and I thought isn't that just so sweet. You guys I love this. Let me know what you think. If you're enjoying the video, I hope you will hit the like button, subscribe if you're not, and please share the video. Thank you. For this DIY, I made a printable using Canva, and I will have a link as a free printable for anyone who wants to use it. I also got a Dollar Tree sign, some antique wax by Waverly, and my White Kills Primer. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the little shamrock. I'm actually not going to work with that side. I'm gonna cover it with some craft paper, and I'm actually gonna use the back and turn it into the front. There was some burlap on the front, but it was on so good, I just said, oh, forget it. I'm not gonna to try to take that off. So I used my white primer paint, and actually I realized, oh, I better draw my shiplap lines first, so I stopped. <laughs> I actually dried the paint first really quick with a blow dryer so that I could go ahead and do this. And then I'm using a utility knife to actually cut into each of those lines so I see the difference so they really look like little shiplap planks. And now I'm going back over the one that I did with the paint and I'm going to finish painting. And I'm doing all my paint in one direction so that it looks like wood grain when I'm done with the whole technique that I'm going to do. I added a second coat, but as you can see, I'm not doing a heavy coverage. I'm letting some of the background peek through, and that's just gonna add to what I'm trying to accomplish here. I'm gonna take the antique wax, and I'm actually going to take a little brush and go through each of those lines that I carved out. And this is a technique that I learned from Jackie at Bless Beyond Measure, and I will link her channel down in the description box. It's such a cool thing. I take a blending brush, and at, while it's still wet, and I just kind of go over it, and I blur it. And you can see there, it looks kind of funny right now, but it's gonna look really good when it's all done. And now I'm taking a screwdriver, I guess, and I'm actually going back through those little lines that I carved out, and this really makes it look like separate pieces of wood. And I absolutely love the way this turned out. I'm gonna take my printable, and I'm gonna use a technique that I learned from my friend Holly at Hot Humble Pie. I'll leave a link for her channel down in my description box. So you spray a little water around the edges of the printable, and then you go ahead and rip the edges. So that gives it a really nice kind of rustic vintage look. And then I'm going to go ahead and use Aileen's decoupage stuff. It's like a Mod Podge. And I'm going to attach that to my sign. Thank you. 
once I have that attached to the sign, I'm going to go over the top again with some of that decoupage premium liquid. Once that dries, I'm going to take a utility knife and I'm just going to cut through those lines but over the top of the paper and that way it looks like, again, they're all individual little planks. Now I'm taking my antique wax and I'm going to lightly go over each of those plank lines again on the part of the printable that had not yet been distressed. So I'm going to do that for all of them and then I'm going to blend it in and then I'm going to distress the rest of that sign because it's so much whiter than the rest of it and I want to try to make it look, you know, as vintage as possible. I felt like the colors were almost a little too vibrant on my printable, so I added some extra antique wax on there to just dull them a little bit. And I just think that really helped a lot. And then I used a baby wipe to wipe it off. And I kind of kept going back and forth, putting some on, taking it off until I felt like it was distressed enough. Next, it was time to cover the back with my craft paper. So I just cut a piece and then hot glued it and trimmed the edges. And that makes it have such a nice finished look. Plus then you won't see all of the St. Patrick's Day stuff on the back. In my stash, I had this little piece of leather and it was just perfect to make a hanger and it just fit the theme kind of so rustic. So I poked the holes through the craft paper because there were already holes in the sign. I came from the back so that the knots will be in the front, tied the knot on each side and that's my hanger. I just trimmed the edges and I think it looks so cute. This farmer's market wood platform set, there were two here for 148. I decided to make one and I made it square instead of rectangle. Now this I'm just using paint sticks and some paint so it's really not going to cost very much. The paint sticks are the ones I got from Amazon and that's apple barrel burnt umber paint with some water mixed in to create a stain and I'm going to stain every single piece of the wood, all sides, edges, top, bottom. Once that's done, I just looked at the picture and figured out how many I might need for the top. I think I did 12 and then I had for each of the four sides. And then I also decided that in order to do this, I was gonna have to use some of my tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna use my square so I can get a good right angle and I'm gonna use a combination of hot glue and liquid adhesive from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to attach all my pieces. Now I'm gonna use this only for lightweight things so I wasn't too worried about the weight of it. If I needed this to hold something heavy, I would have absolutely used wood glue and probably E6000 together. And now I'm just assembling it and I'm taking the cross slats over the top and I'm going to attach each one and I'm going to complete that top. Then I'm going to assemble the sides and the legs and the legs are what I'm going to use the tumbling tower blocks for. I'm going to stain those as well with the mix that I had made. Thank you. 
And then I'm gonna take two of the tumbling tower blocks and use a combination of the liquid adhesive and the hot glue together. And then I'm gonna stack that two high. So it's gonna be four tumbling tower blocks for each leg. And then I will attach the side slats that go down a little bit lower. So there's the ones that are up close to the top and then the one I'm putting right now on the side. And of course there's four of those as well. Now this was pretty easy to assemble once I figured out kind of the pattern of it. I think it's really cute, but I did want it to be a little more stable. So I don't know if the other one had this, but I added pieces underneath like crossbars just to make sure that this could hold anything at all, even just little decor pieces. I decided to add one more coat of stain and then I took it outside and did a clear coat over the entire thing. And I love it. What do you guys think? For this Kirkland's dupe, I'm doing a lavender arrangement in a rustic watering can. Now they're asking $45. I know I can make this for less. Now mine's not a watering can. It's more like a container you'd see in a restaurant like that holds syrup, but it was missing the lid. I found that at a thrift shop. Picked it up for I think $1.99. Great deal. Then I'm going to do the faux galvanized metal technique. Take some black paint, I'm using the ink color by Waverly, and just dab it on. I'm using a little makeup sponge from the Dollar Tree. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of the metallic silver paint from Folklore. And again, just dabbing that on, just to, you know, kind of lighten up the black a teeny bit. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of white and do the same thing, just dabbing it all over. I'm not rubbing it in, I'm not spreading it, just making little dabbing marks. And then after that, the next color I'm gonna use is a gray. It's gonna be steel from the Waverly Chalk Paint line. And I'm gonna be putting that all over it, including the inner rim, because that might be seen. So I'm trying to do everything that's going to be seen. Now I learned this technique from a channel called Chalk It Up Fancy. It's a mother-daughter team, and they do a lot of amazing tutorials. And I've learned so much of my special techniques from them. And I'll put their channel link down in my description as well. The last thing I'm going to do is use some burnt umber from Apple Barrel Paint. You can get those at Walmart. And I literally just dab around all the edges and seams and places where you might find some rust or serious wear and tear. And it's amazing how it gives that look. It's so good at that. And I know people use all different colors for this, but I will say burnt umber is my favorite for this technique. Does anyone else think it's funny that we clean off these items with alcohol and then turn around and do a painting technique to make them look dirty and rusty? <laughs> I just think that's kind of funny how we do that. Oh well, at least I know it's clean, right? <laughs> I got this little roll of burlap from Walmart and I'm going to cut a strip. I don't want those seamed edges involved in this. I want everything to look very, very, you know, rustic like the picture from Kirkland. So I'm going to cut off both of the edges and then I'm going to pull some of the thread of the burlap on either side to create a little bit of a frayed edge. And I do that after it's attached because that's when I thought of it. <laughs> so now I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue and at first it didn't want to stick because I think I missed the mark on where the burlap was. So I go back in and I've got it now and I'm going to use my little applicator for makeup that I got I think on Amazon I can link that down below too that way I don't burn my fingers I used to burn myself all the time you guys oh my gosh so now I'm fraying it
And then I'm going to add a little bit of the rope that I have and tie around and make a very simple bow just like the picture. I'm also going to put a couple of dabs of hot glue to keep the bow in place because I want it to lay, you know, a certain way so it looks just like the piece that I'm trying to replicate. I have several picks of lavender that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to arrange them inside what is now a vase I guess and I'm going to cut off the ends so that it's just the right height to fit in there and look as similar to the picture as possible and I do actually end up adding another one when you see the final reveal because I thought it just needed to be a little bit fuller. I really love how this piece turned out. It's funny I don't decorate my house with super rustic things but I love making them. Go figure. My husband loves this one too. I think he wants it now in his office. Pretty soon all my crafts are going to end up in his office. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> anyway I hope you guys like it. I think it looks a lot like the original one other than having a pouring spout. Other than that, I think it came out great. So let me know what you think. Now this DIY is super rustic and very inexpensive and easy to do. I have some sticks that my husband gathered for me from our yard and I'm just figuring out the right ones that I want to make a ladder out of. So I needed two really thicker long ones and then four that would go across that weren't quite as thick. So I'm figuring that out right now out of all the sticks that I do have. And then I'm going to use my tin snips and I'm going to cut off all the rough edges, which I will have a link for that in my Amazon store down below. And they work really well for that, by the way. And I'm going to use my little ladybug vacuum to clean up all the little debris and there's a link for that too in my store and now I'm just kind of placing everything to see if I need to trim some more which I got out my little handy dandy saw from the Dollar Tree and um, I struggle with that thing but it did I did get the job done and so now I am going to cut some rope and this rope is like a double ply if you will so I'm going to separate it and I'm going to use the single ply part of it because there's no reason to waste all of that rope And I'm gonna hot glue all the pieces in place so that they don't move around while I'm trying to tie the rope around. And I'm literally just gonna put the rope underneath, tie a single knot, hot glue it down, and then wrap it around each side and hot glue that down, and then trim the edges. And I'm gonna do that for all eight intersections. So I cut eight pieces of that rope. And then I also cut four pieces of the rope to go on the very ends of the longer pieces, which you will see shortly. And I'm gonna wrap those around and hot glue them as well. And I decided that I wanted to use my antique wax on the twigs because I wanted it to look a little darker and I really liked the way that looked. So I applied it to every single part and then I took a paper towel and I rubbed off all of the excess so it wasn't like super, super dark. And here I am now going back in and doing the ends of the long pieces of the ladder just so it has a little bit of a more finished look. I really love the size of this ladder. I can place it in so many different parts of my home and style it all different ways. And I don't have anything like this, so I'm really excited and I hope you guys like it.
for this DIY, I'm using the inside of a Dollar Tree canvas, just the frame, some skewers from Dollar Tree, and some tumbling tower blocks. I'm going to take my sanding sponge and I'm going to just make sure that all of the edges are nice and splinter free. And I'm going to clean up any of the dust left behind with my ladybug vacuum. And all of my tools are down in my Amazon store, so feel free to check it out in case you need some. I'm going to use my Kills White Primer and I'm going to paint this entire frame, back, front, inside, all everywhere, just the whole entire thing. I'm going to use my heat tool so I can dry this quickly and move on to the next step. I'm creating a little mini window and so for the pane dividers I'm going to use these little skewers. At first I'm just going to tape them down and paint them in that same white paint front and back. Then I'm going to take my tumbling power blocks and I'm going to paint those as well. Just the parts that you're going to see. And now I'm going to figure out where I'm going to be placing them all. I'm going to create a little window box for florals. It's going to be so cute when this is done. I'm just positioning everything and then I'm going to start hot gluing it to the actual frame and creating my little box. Once all of the pieces are in place, I'm going to go back in with the hot glue on the underside and just kind of reinforce every seam so that it's nice and secure. Now I'm doing the next level, which is going to be the very front, and I'm going to put them vertically and then again reinforcing wherever I can. I don't think I need anything stronger than hot glue because I'm just putting light florals in here, but if you were putting something heavier, I would suggest a more permanent stable glue. Next, I'm going to take my four skewers and I'm going to figure out exactly how long they need to be to put two vertical and two horizontal to make my little panes for the window. And I'm just going to use my little snips to go ahead and cut them to size and then I'm going to hot glue them down and do the first the vertical ones and then I'm going to do the horizontal ones. And this is so easy. They're definitely secure. I put hot glue under and over each of the ends of the skewers so there's no question that this is staying in place. Next, I'm going to very lightly dry brush some antique wax by Waverly over all of the white surfaces. And basically, I'm going to put a little bit on my brush, wipe most of it off, and then just kind of drag it around the edges and just wherever I want to see a little bit of distressing. Like I said, this is going to be a very, very light dry brush. I just want a little bit of an effect of it not being like stark white. I always save styrofoam whenever I get something in a package, so I'm just going to cut a little teeny rectangular piece of this very messy styrofoam and I'm going to hot glue it into that little window box that I created. And then I'm going to take some really cute Dollar Tree florals and I'm just going to snip them all to make them the right size and I'm going to start putting them inside of this styrofoam and it just looks so cute already. Oh my gosh, I love these colors, I love this pick and um, this is just turning out so, so cute. I'm going to add some of these cute little off-white flowers. I think it's just the right touch with the purple and the yellow and the green. And like I said, I'm just really loving this. And then I'm going to take some jute cord from the Dollar Tree and I'm literally going to hot glue it to the back and wrap it around, kind of crisscross. And then I'm going to push it around and kind of shape it the way I want it. And this is just to add that little farmhouse touch to it. And I absolutely love how this looks. I had a Goodwill find that had this little burlap flower on it and I took it off. I figured I'd save it. And guess what? It's perfect for this DIY. It's going to hot glue it right to the center and literally that really makes this one so cute. Now I'm going to take a little bit of craft paper to cover up that back area because I don't want you to see any of my styrofoam or any of the mess. I'm just going to hot glue it and trim the edges and then I'm going to make a little hanger out of jute cord and this one's done. And you guys, I love it. I think it's so cute. You can hang it. It can be like sitting on a shelf whatever you want. Just like bring in a little bit of outdoors indoors and it's just so cute and farmhouse. I hope you guys like it. Let me know.
This gorgeous face is another thing that I found on Pinterest, but it was pretty expensive at somewhere between $24 and $34, and I thought, I'm going to make it. So again, I'm using one of my creamer containers that I have saved, and I'm using a blade to cut off the top. And then I'm going to trim it even shorter than that after I remove the wrapper. I'm going to cut in one of the grooves because I think I can get a straighter line if I do it that way. Otherwise, I'm kind of all over the place. I'm going to take my little sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to sand around the whole outside of this container because I want the paint to stick and it's a little bit smooth. And then I'm also going to run it over the bottom and the top just to make sure that everything is kind of roughed up. Now I'm using that Kills Primer white paint that I like to use and I'm going to give it a good solid coat. And it really doesn't take much to cover since it was already white. I have this greenery pick that I got at the Target dollar spot and it's got these little pieces that when you cut them off they can lay flat so I've hot glued them to the side all the way around and then a couple up a little higher and I'm just going to make sure all the little edges are secure and then I'm going to give it a coat of the white paint right over the top. Next, I'm going to use the color Truffle from the Waverly Chalk Paint, and I'm going to distress over the top. Now, I'm not going super heavy, but I'm also not going too light. I can go back and forth with the lighter color if I need to to get just what I'm looking for, and I actually do that several times. Here, I'm hitting it again with the white because I thought it was a little bit too dark. Now in the inspiration piece, it had a little touch of blue in it. So I'm gonna use one of my Arteza markers. You're gonna see how I'm going to, there it is. I'm just gonna put it around the edge of the top and just over a little bit of the little, they're supposed to look like pine trees. And then I'm using this hard kind of plastic bristle brush and I'm writing on it with the marker. And then I'm very lightly putting that on the sides and it gives me just the right effect, just the right amount of blue. Now I am gonna go back over the trees a little bit because the blue looked like I was just putting little lines on it. So I'm gonna use the truffle and kind of cover some of the blue and then I'm gonna go back over it again with the white. It's a back and forth process till you get what you want. And eventually I do and then I distress the rest of it a little bit and I'm just really happy with how it turned out. I'm gonna go ahead and put some more greenery on the inside. I'm just gonna trim some pieces. I'm gonna use some of the Spanish moss to fill in and I'm gonna hot glue that kind of around the sides so I don't have to fill up the entire thing. And I'm just thrilled with how it turned out. It's pretty close to the original, just a little bit of a different shape, but I really like it. I hope you guys like it. The inspiration piece didn't have these white flowers, but I really like them, so I added them, and I'm glad I did. I think it was just the right touch. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. This Kirkland inspiration piece is so cute. Now, I didn't want to do the gold star on top because I didn't want to do a Christmas tree, but I did everything else. But it's $72.99, and I knew I could make it for a couple of dollars. So I've got a picture frame from Dollar Tree, and then I'm going to be using some craft sticks and my white Arteza paint marker, along with three colors of paint. There's going to be steel from Waverly. I'm going to use the antique wax from Waverly and the white wax from Waverly. Now I'm gonna make a much smaller version of this sign, but I'm still gonna copy the basic sign itself. I'm gonna be blending these colors until I think I achieve the color that theirs was. I didn't really have one paint that would fit that, so I did a bunch of layering so that I could come up with what I believe to be the right color. In order to create the same pattern that their little wood planks were, I cut a bunch of craft sticks to varying sizes and then kind of put them together like a puzzle. And once I had the right amount, I 
took them off of that piece of cardboard and I put some glue down and I added a couple rows at a time so that I could keep everything intact and just recreate as best as I could the look that they did. I use those same three colors to layer onto this wood base that I made and I'm going to achieve as close as I can to the color that they use since I don't actually know what it is. It's kind of a guessing game just by looking at it. You have to tell me if you think I achieved it. Using my white Arteza paint marker, I am going ahead and drawing the tree now. It's just a stick tree. It doesn't require any special artist skills. It's just, you know, steady hand and doing the best you can. It couldn't be simpler, to be honest with you. And I don't think if it was any more complicated, I could have done it. What do you think? Did I nail it or fail it? I am very happy with how this turned out. I hope you guys like it. Please let me know. My husband loved this one, so it was a win in our house. One funny thing is when I put it together, I realized I had drawn the tree on upside down, so I had to change the hanger around. <laughs> Easy fix. I got this wire wreath at Target Dollar Spot and I don't want to use the flowers for this. I just want to use the ring. So I'm going to pry them off. They had them wrapped in this heavy duty little metal thing. It took some serious muscle, but I did it. <laughs> and now I can use this to create my next project. I'm going to take some lavender picks. Now I'm going to paint this ring black with my ink Waverly chalk paint, both sides of course. And I just love the way that looks. I think that just really nice. I love the original color, but it just isn't going to go with what I'm trying to do today. I'm going to remove the tag and trim down my little lavender pick, which I did get at the Dollar Tree, by the way. They have some pretty good ones this year. Um, I also like the ones at Walmart too. Now I've got this really cute striped ribbon from burlapfabrics.com and I'm going to use this throughout this particular DIY. I absolutely love this ribbon and of course I will have a link down in the description box. And of course I'm using my tin snips to cut these which I love. They are so handy. I'm going to take a little piece of jute twine and just tie my pieces of lavender together. I want them to have the look like they're hanging, like when you hang dried flowers. So I'm just going to do that, wrap around the excess little bit of twine and hot glue it down. I'm going to fan out my pieces of lavender so that they kind of fill the entire ring. And then I'm going to take that adorable ribbon and I'm going to wrap it around the ring three different places. At the bottom, in the middle, and towards the top. And I think it just looks so cute. I, you know, sometimes you wrap around the whole ring, but I just wanted to add some accents because I want the lavender to be the focal point. And now I'm just trimming the excess that might show through.
Now that I've got the ribbon wrapped around three times, I'm going to take some more of that same ribbon and I'm going to wrap it around the very bottom of my little bouquet of lavender. I just thought that would look really cute. And I'm going to hot glue it down. And then after that's done, I'm going to position it on the ring and then I can hang it like upside down and it looks so cute. It's very lightweight, so I can just use hot glue to attach it, and it's going to stay just fine. And because I love this ribbon so much, I'm going to cut a little piece that I can wrap around at the very top and then I will add a little bit of jute twine behind it and hide the hanger so it looks like the cute ribbon is the hanger, but really the jute twine behind it is. And I love doing that. It just makes it look so finished, but not secure to hang it by that really. So by putting the jute on there, it really does help make it secure. And to make the back look finished off, I'm going to cut another small piece of that ribbon and I'm going to cover the knot right over the back of the jute twine and then all you'll see is the little hanger. And that is just so perfect. It looks much more finished now. Now, honestly, anyone could stop right here. Well, except me, of course. <laughs> so I'm going to take some jute twine, wrap it around, and I'm going to make it just a little kind of a messy bow with it. I'm going to tie it around the middle, cut open the loops, and trim it. And I'm just going to hot glue it right to the center of where the gathering is of the lavender. And then I will be done, <laughs> believe it or not. But I think this turned out so cute. I really love it. I used this little garden edging from the Dollar Tree and then there's also uh, this gather sign I got at the Target Dollar Spot. That wreath that you saw is for a different DIY. I wasn't sure what I was going to do when I first started. I'm using my tin snips to take off all the edges and trim down this little garden edging and those tin snips are amazing. I will link that down in the description box. I love them. And I'm just going to, you know, shape it to the size that I want it to be. I don't know if you noticed, but I accidentally broke the piece on the top. So I'm going to hot glue it on both sides to get that thing to stay. And that does take care of it, by the way. So it worked out perfectly. I'm going to use my Kills White Primer to heavily dry brush. I wouldn't even say it's a dry brush. It's a pretty wet brush. The front and back of the little garden edging. I wanted it to have a different look than just the black. Now I will struggle with this later, you'll see, because of the gather sign and how it doesn't show up really well. But we'll take care of that as we go. In the meantime, I love the way this looks. It's so pretty. Now I'm going to take my gather sign and I want to make it look like galvanized metal instead of just super shiny. So I'm going to use a little makeup sponge. First thing I'm going to do is take the Waverly chalk paint in the color ink, which is black. I'm going to dab it all over the sign until I have enough on there to make me feel like it looks good. <laughs> and then I'm going to take my plaster color chalk paint and I'm going to put that all over, do the exact same thing. Next, I'm going to take my elephant color chalk paint, 
which is like a gray. And I'm going to do the same thing with that one. And then after that's done, I'm going to take my metallic silver and I'm going to do the same thing. And then I get the look that I'm hoping for. And it really does come out good. I learned this from a channel called Chalk It Up Fancy, and I will put their link in my description box as well. I'm going to use some burnt umber by Apple Barrel to create a bit of a rusted look. So I'm just going to put it around the edges of the letters and it really does give it that, you know, rust worn look. It's a very cool technique. Now for the fun part, figuring out how I want to assemble this. I have this really cool twine ribbon from burlapfabrics.com, which I will put all the information in my description box. And I've also got these little lavender picks. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna kind of stretch out the lavender so they spread out a little bit, trim off anything I don't like on there. And then I'm going to wrap that little twine ribbon around the bottom. It's so pretty. Oh my gosh, I love this ribbon. Thank you so much for sending this to me, Burlap. Fabric.com. I am loving it. It's so unusual and it's just the coolest. Now I'm going to hot glue my little bundle of lavender down to the bottom of the center of this little edging. And it looks so good, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm really excited about this one. And I'm going to attach my little gather metal sign to the center of the bottom of the bouquet where that really cool ribbon is. Now, this is where I started struggling because you can't hardly read the gather sign. And I just didn't think about that. I'm tacking down the little lavender plants so that they stay exactly where I want them to go. And I decided to add a little bit more lavender in the center because I felt like it was just missing something right there. I have this really cool wide ribbon that burlapfabric.com sent me and I'm going to put that in the back. I think that's going to look really good. My first attempt to make the gather sign stand out is to put a little bit of a lighter color over it. It doesn't really work. I'm going to go back over some of that edging with a little bit of my black paint. Next, I'm gonna hot glue that wide ribbon to the back and just make sure it's nice and secure. There's a little bit of excess hanging over on both sides, so I'm gonna trim that off. In case I decide to hang this, I'm just going to add a little bit of jute twine around the back, make a knot, and glue it to that little piece in the back. And that's so simple, it'll just make it hang and you can't even see it. Okay, so I'm still struggling with seeing this gather sign. So now I'm trying the black paint and I'm putting it all around the edges. That really does help actually. That is making it stand out a little better. But then I got a teeny bit heavy handed with it. So I have to go back in with the elephant and cover up where I got too many black blotches. When you see the final reveal on this one, you'll see that I added a little bit of the celery colored paint and that actually finally did the trick. There is something so rustic about an old rugged cross, and that's what I'm going to make. I had a bunch of sticks that my husband was kind enough to gather for me before the winter started, and I've been saving them for, you know, whatever I might want to use them for. So I'm gathering the same size sticks for the long side of the cross, and then I'm going to cut some to make the short side of the cross. And this is just so fun. I mean, I'm just playing with sticks. They're free, they came from outside. So now I'm gonna use my uh, tin snips and just try to cut off any knobs that are, you know, distracting, just, you know, trying to get the pieces to a similar size. I'm not going for like an exact, I don't mind if some of the pieces stick out a little bit because this is rusted and it's rugged. And I just love the whole concept of this. Thank you. 
now that I have my two little stacks of sticks, easy for me to say, <laughs> I'm going to use some jute twine and I'm going to tie just before the ends. So like, I don't know, an inch or so before each end. And I'm going to hot glue it down and I'm going to wrap it around so that it holds nice and sturdy. And then I'm going to add some additional hot glue here and there to make sure that it stays in place, like that the middle sticks don't slide out. I'm going to do this on each end of the two stacks. So that's four different spots that I'm going to do this. And it just adds to the farmhouse rustic look of it. And it's just, I love it, you guys. I really do. I mean, talk about a cost-effective DIY, but it's beautiful. It's just so natural and beautiful. And I cannot wait for this to be up in my house. I'm super excited. And now I'm moving on to the short stack, which is the cross part of the cross, or should I say the horizontal part of the cross. I'm going to do the exact same thing to this one that I did to the other one. Now it's time to assemble my cross. And the way I'm gonna do that is using that same twine. And I don't think I said it earlier, but this twine is from Walmart. I'm gonna pull it under and I'm gonna tie a knot around diagonally. And then I'm gonna to continue to wrap it around back and forth on each angle and then even around the two sides to get a really nice secure hold. And I'm gonna hot glue it down. And just like I did with the other ones, look for any loose spots and add a little dab of hot glue to hold it in place. I want it to be very secure. I don't want this to go anywhere. And I am just loving this one, you guys. It's so, it just, peaceful. It's Well, it's the cross. I mean, what it represents and, you know, what Jesus did for us by being on that cross. It was, it was just very cool to make this. I have this gorgeous burlap ribbon with lace over the middle from Dollar Tree and I'm going to wrap it from around the back of the tall side of the cross and then over the top of the horizontal pieces, kind of like a shroud. I mean, maybe you've seen people wrap things around a cross like this before, but I just thought it was just the perfect touch. It kept it farmhouse rustic and it just, oh, I don't know. You guys, I really love this one. I don't know what else to say. Let me know what you think. Um, I'm just so excited. I know my husband's going to want it. I just know I'm never going to see it again. Well, I shouldn't say that. He'll put it in his office and that's where I'll see it again. <laughs> For this DIY, I'm using this Welcome Spring sign from the Dollar Tree and this really cool twine I got from burlapfabric.com. Again, the information is going to be down in my description box. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my Kills White Primer. I love this stuff. And I'm going to paint the entire back with one coat of it. I'm not going to go crazy and cover it real heavily. I don't mind if a little bit shows through. Because what I'm going to do next is use my Antique Wax, a combination of that by Waverly and Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel Paints and make a faux wood green look. The key to this is making sure your strokes all go in the direction that you want the wood grain to go in. So in my case, I'm going up and down and I'm starting off with lighter you know, amounts and then I'm adding more little by little until I get the look I want. You really can't do this wrong. You're just going for what you like. And I'm going to use an Arteza paint marker. It's in brown and I'm going to go all around the edges because it was kind of this light looking color and I wanted it to blend and look like the whole thing was a piece of wood. Now I'm going to take my square ruler and I'm going to create kind of like shiplap lines and then I'm going to dig them out a little bit with a like putty knife I think is what I'm using or a blade just to kind of give that look. Now I'm going to actually be using that twine to outline a shape that I'm going to draw on there next. 
I'm gonna take this little shape from the Dollar Tree that's a mason jar. Now, this is smaller than I want it to be, so I'm just gonna kinda use it to get the overall idea of a mason jar. I want mine to actually be bigger and wider than this one because of the piece that I'm using to put it on. It would look too small if I used that little teeny size to draw. Now I'm gonna take that awesome twine from burlapfabrics.com. I love it, it's like such a good quality and it's lighter so it really stands out against this wood grain look. Anyway, I'm going to hot glue it right around the outline of that mason jar that I drew and it's gonna look so cool. I saw a picture of somebody who did something similar and I kind of made it my own but I just love the idea of it. So that's what I'm doing right now and I'm just gonna go ahead and let you watch how I built my mason jar out of twine. Now at this point, as I'm building like the little, um, I don't know what they are called, but like the ridges around the top, I want it to look like my flowers are inside the mason jar. And since this isn't really like fully three dimensional, it's kind of hard. So what I did was I put them under the twine and that way when I lay the twine over it, it looks like they're inside. I mean, I just think that came out really cool. I love the flowers. I decided not to add the colorful ones. I thought it'd be nice to keep this kind of neutral because that way I could put it up whenever I want and wherever I want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add those little rivety things around the top of the jar. I decided to add a little dot of hot glue at the base of each of those stems just to make sure they stayed in place. And I like my projects to look finished, so I took some craft paper and I just hot glued it to the back so that way you wouldn't see the other design on it and it just looks a little bit more, you know, professional and polished. Not that I'm selling it, but in case I ever wanted to or even if I give it away, I just want to make sure that it looks nice on both sides. I'm going to take a little bit more of that really, really nice twine that I used already. I'm going to put a little tape around the end and then I'm going to poke holes back through that craft paper since there were already holes in the sign. And I'm going to feed it from the back to the front and make a knot. And then I'm going to put a little dab of hot glue there to hold it in place. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I love the knot in the front. I just think it's so cute and it adds such a farmhouse feel to it. And it makes the sign hang nicer because the string is more on the back. At least it's my preference anyway. <laughs> And of course, I couldn't just leave well enough alone, so I had to add some more of those little white flowers. I just felt like right in the front there, that it was really dark towards the top of the mason jar. So I just added a few more flowers, hot glued them down, and I think that just kind of balanced it out. You'll have to let me know what you think. I really like this one. I'm super happy about it. Can't wait to hear what you guys think in the comments. This DIY is super simple. I'm using a coaster, two little pallet planks from the Dollar Tree, some florals from the Target Dollar Spot, some burlap from Walmart, and that's it. And I'm going to attach the two little planks together, and then I'm going to stain them with the antique wax, putting it on and then rubbing off the excess. And I'm gonna do both sides on this because that's how I'm gonna finish this one off. It doesn't make sense to put craft paper on it because of the slats. And I'm just making sure to cover every single piece of wood with this stain.
I am also going to slightly distress the little coaster since it looks like it's got little wood planks on it too. I'm just going to go ahead and add some of the antique wax to that so that it will match with this kind of a rustic wood theme. I'm going to take the burlap and I'm going to cut out a piece so that it can lay right under the coaster and on top of the wood. And I'm going to fray the edges a little bit. I just want to add that for just that little extra embellishment and kind of that, again, rustic feel. I'm going to use just a little bit of hot glue and be careful if you do this because the hot glue comes right through the burlap and you can burn yourself. I had to be super careful because I always burn myself but I need to be better. And then I'm also going to hot glue the coaster right on top of that right in the center. And I'm loving the way that looks but of course I'm thinking it needs something more. So I've got these little florals. I'm going to cut off some little greenery pieces and position them at the top. I'm going to add a little flower and I'm also going to add a little jute bow just because I just feel like it needed something extra. <laughs> I'm actually very happy with how it turned out. For the jute bow, I just wrapped the jute around two fingers until I you know, got it thick enough. And then I tied a little, another piece of jute right in the center. And then I just cut open the loops. And literally that's all I did to make that bow super easy and it's really cute. And now I'm just hot gluing down the greenery, kind of like with the stems in the center so that it goes out on each side. And then I will place that little bow. And then in the center of the bow, I'm gonna put a cute little flower. And I think that really finishes this piece off and I really like it. You know, it's not too many steps. It was super simple to do. You could go without the florals. You could go without the bow, but you know, just do it to the style that it fits your home and what you like. Do any of you also save containers? <laughs> Let me know in the comments what kind of crazy things you save. So I have this creamer container. I've got a bunch of them that I keep saving. So I thought I'll make something out of it. So I'm gonna repurpose it. I'm gonna remove the outer wrapping and I'm gonna use a combination of the white rope from Dollar Tree, which I love and I finally found some. And then also some uh, regular natural looking um, nautical rope that I have also from Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna do a combination of those, wrapping them around this bottle and hot gluing it. Now the tricky part was getting the little like nozzle twist top part off. I, did, I should have just gotten out a saw, which I don't know why I didn't, but I used my hot glue gun and I poked holes all the way around and then took a scissors and cut it off. What a dumb idea. Okay, you guys, don't do that. Just don't do that. Either leave the top on and cover it with the rope or get a saw or something. That was just not my brightest moment. <laughs> anyway, it's off. That's all that really matters. And now I'm going to go hot glue all this rope on. With the white rope, it's a little like kind of fray. Is that, is that a word? Fray at the end. So I used a little hot glue on the end first and kind of like pulled it together so it was more of like a, a nice tight end and then I attached it. And I do that also when I get to the end of the white rope before I start another one. Otherwise, it's just too wide. Does that make sense? Anyway, go ahead and watch. You'll just see me. I'm going to speed it up and you'll just see me wrapping the rope all the way around.
I decided to alternate between the two different kind of ropes. I thought that made it look more interesting. And then when I get to the very top and I'm back to the natural looking rope, I, because it was such a jagged top edge because of the ridiculous way that I cut it off, I went ahead and I just kept wrapping over the top a little bit to cover all the plastic so there were no sharp ends or anything like that at all. Once I get to the top, I just tuck it under a little bit, hot glue it, and cut off the rope. And now I'm going to grab some really pretty florals that I got at the Dollar Tree. I love these little pink and white flowers. You could put any flowers that suit your decor or the season so you can change them out very easily. And I'm just going to start cutting them into pieces. I'm also going to add another little pick that I found. They're kind of like these pink mini berry looking things. I don't really think they're berries, but I don't know how to describe them. But I like it because it's a different texture and they're tall and kind of windy. I thought that made it look very interesting. And you guys, literally, that's it. This is a really easy DIY and I'm really happy with how it turned out. What do you think? Well, let me know down in the comments. This is gonna be another really easy DIY. I am using a DIY that I previously made, but it doesn't really fit my decor, so I decided I would go ahead and use a blade and take off the canvas that I had painted. I'm just gonna pull that all off, and I'll use the canvas, the opposite side that I had painted on for something else. I removed the staples, which are not the easiest thing, by the way. And then I sanded all the way around every surface on this because I just wanted it to not, you know, give me splinters. And I've got this really cool wide ribbon from burlapfabric.com, which I will also have linked down below. I'm just gonna cut a piece that fits across the entire frame, and I'll use that shortly. I'm gonna use my Kills primer, and I am going to just lightly paint every part of this little frame, inside, outside, back, everything. But I'm not gonna do a full coverage because I want it to look distressed, and I want some of that wood to peek through. And I'm gonna use my heat tool so that I can dry that quickly and I'll have a link in my Amazon store for that. Now I'm gonna use my staple gun and I'm going to attach this piece of ribbon that I cut to the back of my little frame. And I'm gonna use quite a few staples because I want it to stay in place. And I do go later and I reinforce with a little bit of hot glue too, you know, just in case it frays. And I have these little teeny sticks that I cut and I'm gonna do a little pattern where I kind of go back and forth like B, upside down B, B, and cross over the tops and bottoms of each one. I'm gonna hot glue those in place. Like I said, this is super simple, very rustic, and it will fit with all kinds of different farmhouse decor, primitive, or you know, just whatever you do rustic. And I just thought it would be really cute to add nature with you know some of my Dollar Tree stuff, and it's an easy project. And I'm gonna take a little bit of my antique wax from Waverly and I'm gonna use a baby wipe. I'm just gonna wipe it on lightly on all of the surfaces where I painted it with the wipe. Now I'm gonna take a little piece of rope and I'm going to hot glue that to the back and then reinforce that with a couple of staples as well. So I have a nice little hanger that you won't see when it's hanging up. Off camera, I added some little greenery that was rub on stickers from Dollar Tree and I just love it. My mom had a very plain wooden frame. You don't see me painting it, but I used my metallic rose gold paint by Folklore to paint the outside of the frame, and then I covered it with a little bit of polyurethane that was a quick dry version. The next thing that I decided to do was dress it up a bit. I added some greenery, and this greenery I believe I got at Dollar Tree. 
I did get some other greenery at Walmart, but I'm pretty sure this one did come from the Dollar Tree. And then of course my jute. What I did here was I created two little pieces that I cut off the stems of the picks and I added them to the top left corner and the bottom right corner with my hot glue. And you can position these any way that you want. I just kind of wanted it to be a little accent on the opposite corners there. My mom doesn't have any plants in her house because she's afraid that she'll kill them. <laughs> so I figured this would add some greenery without having anything that she has to take care of or worry about killing or whatever. Then I took some of my jute and I wrapped it around three of my fingers about 20 times. And then I cut each of the ends and then I tied a little bit of jute around the middle to make the flowers. They ended up being a couple inches long after I trimmed them. I put one in the middle of each of the greenery corners. I know there's so many ways to make these flowers. I really don't know all of them yet. But this one I just kind of came up with and I thought it would be really easy. So then I stretched the jute around to kind of make it more circular and I had trimmed them so they wouldn't overpower the frame. And then I thought I should put something in the middle of the flower so I got two of my beads and I had ordered the beads off Amazon because you get a thousand for a really good price versus the little bag from the Dollar Tree. And those are colored so you have to paint them and these come just plain wood so you can make them anything you want. My mom uses teal in her house, so I went ahead and I painted the centers of the flowers teal to kind of match her decor. And I'm just using the end of a little foam brush that was pretty worn out, but there was still a little portion of it that was usable. So rather than throw it away, I went ahead and I just tore it off and I used that to paint those little beads. And then I added that rose gold just to the very center and I used a little uh, bead of hot glue to make a little center and there it is. It came out really cute. Let me know in the comments what you think and if you think you could do this yourself. I didn't remember to film the first part. I kind of got excited and creative and forgot to turn the camera on. So I'll walk you through it. I used the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree and also some of the large popsicle sticks to make this. I've been using the natural wood tumbling tower blocks for projects, but leaving the painted ones. So I thought maybe I'll use them in this project because I can paint over them. I used my hot glue to put nine of the tumbling tower blocks together in stacks of three. I repeated this to make all four sides and glued them all together. And then I created a square and you can see that two sides that are opposing each other fit inside of the other two in order to make the finished box. On what would be the top side, I took four of the large popsicle sticks and just framed around so that there would be nothing showing of the tumbling tower blocks. And of course, I cut off the rounded ends of the popsicle sticks for every single one that I did use. I used nine of the large popsicle sticks then and I attached them to the very top. As you can, this is from the underneath view, but I did that all the way across to create the front of my sign and I used my hot glue gun to do that. Once all of the popsicle sticks were attached and everything looked the way I wanted it, I took my Waverly Antique Wax and I went ahead and stained the top and then rubbed off the excess with a paper towel. I then painted the Tumbling Tower blocks with the Folk Art chalk paint in the color Cascade. And I just did the outside and the very bottom. I took some of my nautical rope and I just hot glued it around the very top outside edges just to give it a little extra trim. And here's another view so that you can see it from a different angle. And at this point we are caught up to where I did film what I was doing. I was looking for a cute little saying having to do with coffee that was pretty short. And I found all kinds of things and then all of a sudden I got this idea I could do something really different. And so I got my stencils out and my square ruler, which I now know what it's called. Thank you, Alan from Alan's Music Channel. And I am now trying to figure out a way to measure this to find out the center. 
I was watching a crafter's channel and I wish I could remember which one it was. I apologize that I don't. She shared this trick. If you're measuring something and it's not an even number, you can tilt your ruler until you get to an even number on the edge and then mark it right in the middle there and you will find your center. And it really worked. So there you go. I did spend some extra time trying to calculate where I actually wanted to put the letters once I had my center. And part of it was I needed to figure out the height of the letters and where everything would fall in the midst of it. And afterwards, it also occurred to me I could have probably done a diagonal measurement and gotten the center that way. But hey, there's more than one option. Once I found the exact spot where I wanted to put my letters, I taped a straight edge to it as a guide so that I would be able to line them up. And I got my stencil out and I used a little dabber and a very small amount of the white chalk paint by Folklore. And I went ahead and I started spelling the word coffee. Now I need to tell you guys, I am terrible at stenciling. I taped down the letters, I cut them out, and they still bled, which means I had to go in and do touch-ups, and maybe it's because they were small, but I just don't do well at stenciling. I'm gonna have to look into some good stickers or vinyl, because this is just a pain. It took me forever to get them right. Once I did get the letters on, I took a little art brush and I connected any of the open spots on the letters because I didn't want them to look as much like stencils, so I filled those in. And when I did that, I overpainted, so then I had to go back with the Waverly Wax in Antique, and this went back and forth for I don't know how long, and I'm not gonna show you all of it because it just took forever. I finally got to a place where I decided it was good enough. I mean, it is homemade, so it didn't have to be perfect, and I let it go. And this is the part that I made up, which was the hashtag coffee. Even though I'd looked for so many sayings, I had never seen this, and I thought, oh, how cute. In order to balance the words across the middle, I added a heart with my stencil at the other end, and that just really, for me, completed that part. I cut a few pieces off of that same greenery that I used for the picture frame project so that I could add a little more flair to this and it wouldn't be quite as plain. And I did similar kind of a design with the greenery in the corner, but then I didn't want to do flowers, so I just wrapped the two pieces in each corner together around where the stems met with my jute, and then I attached that with my hot glue gun right to the picture on the opposing corners. And I really thought it came out cute. I'd love to know what you think and how you would have done this if you would have done anything different or if you have any other ideas, that would be fun. So let me know in the comments. Now, wouldn't you know that I completely forgot to put Mod Podge over the top to kind of seal the paint, and I'd already put the greenery on, so I got my Mod Podge out and a little foam brush, and I just worked around everything. And you know what? It worked out, but silly me, I completely forgot to do that step. So note to self for the next time, get the Mod Podge on before you add anything extra to the top. It's always good to keep learning and keep an open mind because things happen and you just have to adjust. <laughs> and here is the finished sign. I am so happy with how it came out. No, it's not perfect, but it's so cute. And it looks so good by our coffee bar. And here's just another view so you can kind of see the outside where I painted it. And those are the dog treats sitting there on the counter with it. But anyway, I just really love how it turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments. This Farmhouse Rustic DIY is going to be 
very rustic. <laughs> I'm using even smaller sticks from that group of sticks that my husband collected for me. And I'm gonna start hot gluing them together. Start with a square and then I put in angles because ultimately I want it to be round. I am making a bird's nest. Now, having done this, you guys, I have gained a whole new respect for birds who make nests because I had clippers, I had hot glue, I had someone else collect the sticks for me. I don't know how they do this without hands, basically with just their beaks. It's pretty impressive if you think about it. I'm adding some Spanish moss to the bottom. So that's gonna be the very base of the little nest. And then I'm gonna build up the sides again with more sticks. And then I'll build out from here so that it gets a little wider. So I wanted, you know, like a nest, the center to be smaller. And then as you get to the edges, it gets wider. And I'm gonna to continue to add the sticks till I get it to the size that I want. I'm gonna continue hot gluing the moss on until I think it looks just like a bird's nest. And now that I have the last little pieces of Spanish moss added on, I'm going to start working on making some eggs. I've got two Easter eggs from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to use a mop head. But in the mop head, it's basically like three strands, so I'm going to separate them. Otherwise, it's going to be the biggest egg ever, so I want to use the thinnest piece of that mop head. I'm huckling the two little eggs so they stay shut, and then I'm going to start at the very top, and I'm just going to go around and around and around until I get the entire egg covered in the strand of the mop head. I'm going to do that with both of the eggs, and literally that's all I'm going to do to them because I want to keep this super simple and very rustic. And I do think they're super cute. Yeah, if you look really closely, you can kind of see the color poking through. But honestly, when they're laying in the nest, you don't notice it as much. And there they are. I'm going to make a little bow now. I'm taking this cute little blue polka dotted bow from Walmart. And I'm also going to take that really thin jute twine. And I'm going to double it up. And I'm just going to tie it around, wrap it around my finger, tie the middle, and then cut the ends. And then I'm going to make a little tail and hot glue the tail to it. I'm also going to wrap some of the blue ribbon around the center to give it like a pretty little center. And once that is all assembled, I'm just going to hot glue it right onto the nest. And that's going to be it, you guys. Oh, I am going to glue the eggs down so they don't move around. But it's just so cute and so easy. And you could style this any way you want. And it's perfect for spring and, you know, or Easter or whatever. I just, I love it. I love the simplicity of it. But it's so beautiful. Please let me know what you think in the comments. And I hope you guys really like it. I hope you enjoyed these 20 rustic DIYs. They were so fun to make. Some of them were a lot older, so my quality wasn't as good, but I think you get the idea. Thanks for taking the time to watch my videos. I really appreciate it, and I want you to know that you are truly a blessing to me. Be sure to like the video, subscribe, and share it with someone else who might like it. See you next time.